Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? It's time for another tutorial from VideoEditingSoftwareGuy.com. Alright guys, today I'm going to be telling you about file formats. You need to know about file formats so you know how to do what you need to do when it's time to do some exporting of your videos. Let's get into it. How'd you do that? Whoa. He did it. Oh boy. Ooh. Cow. All you have to do is ask. I've had several people ask me about the best format for high quality or HD video. Now, the truth of the matter is, you have to know what you're using a video for to determine what the best export format is for your particular use. Are you uploading to the web, embedding it on a website, using it for DVDs or Blu-rays? Are you using it for broadcasting, or are you just creating a composite for later use? In order to know which freaking file format is the best for your particular use, you have to know what each format is used for. Well, mi gente, that's what I'm here to tell you. Keep in mind, the fantastic knowledge and information which I'm about to bestow upon you can be used to determine the correct export type for any video editor. Let's get down to the basics, shall we? First of all, choose the right format in your recording device. You want to select the appropriate file format in your camcorder or DSLR for your project. If you want to upload an HD video to YouTube, you shouldn't be recording at 352 by 480 resolutions. If you're going for the film look, you shouldn't be recording at 30 frames per second. After you selected the appropriate format for your device, you can match it up with one of the several file formats in your video editing application based on your needs. Next. Select a file format for your particular situation. I'll get to more on that in a few. And finally, select the appropriate resolution, frames per second, and bit rate, which matches as closely as possible to the option you selected in your recording device. This will ensure that you have the desired results you're looking for when you're recording your scenes. Now that we're done with all that jazz, I guess we should start talking about the most popular file formats and what each one brings to the table. Let's jump into the Cyberlay Power Director 12 Ultimate Interface and get things popping. Here we are in Power Director 12. Once you've completed editing your video, you click on the Produce tab. In this tab, we have all kinds of crazy options for exporting our video to the format for our specific use. Under the standard 2D tab, we have eight main options. AVI, MPEG-2, H.264, AVC or AVC HD, WMV, MP4, MOV, MKV, and audio. These will be the best file types that most people will use. Let's get started with AVI. Now, AVI stands for Audio Video Analyst. Basically, it's a media container that stores just about any type of audio and video. AVI is one of the oldest video formats and it's compatible with just about any computer or disc player. This is not the file format that you want to use for media streaming online. The quality is not the best. As you can see, the highest resolution available in PowerDirector 12 is 720 by 480 at 25 megabits per second. AVI is probably best suited for use with older devices that are unable to play the newer file formats out there. Next we have MPEG-2. MPEG stands for Moving Pictures Expert Group. These so-called experts are the MPEGers of the universe. They're responsible for all MPEG iterations out there. MPEG-2, which is actually H.262, is used frequently in digital TV signals and DVDs distributed by movie companies. Many people, I mean, a bunch of people out there, love the quality of MPEG-2 for online streaming, but the lack of bitrate options makes for less flexibility when editing, uploading video, or embedding on websites. As you can see from the available options in PowerDirector 12, there are several settings for DVDs and the resolution goes all the way up to 1920 by 1080 at a maximum of 25 megabytes per second. 
This format is best suited for DVDs or broadcasting over the air for cable or satellite TV. Next on the menu is H.262 AVC or AVCHD. Now, AVCHD stands for Advanced Video Codec High Definition. Don't that sound fancy? This format is mostly used for creating HD DVDs. Not Blu-rays, HD DVDs. Using this format takes a lot of PC processing power and RAM. So if you're going to be editing these types of files, as many camcorders can record AVCHD files nowadays, make sure your computer is up to the task. All right. PowerDirector has a bevy of options for H.264 AVC, all the way up to 4K resolution of 4096 by 2160 60p at 50 megabytes per second. AVC HD is best for creating HD DVDs and HD files for viewing on 4K devices. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about WMV. I'm just kidding, I love me some WMV, <laughs> because I do. WMV stands for Windows Media Video. If you're looking for smaller file sizes and don't give a rat's fat patootie about quality, this is the way to go. These files are used for playback on computers, office applications, and internet streaming, although today internet streaming is kind of like a rarity. WMV files can be played back in a variety of media players, which is what still makes it usable, despite the lack of quality compared to the newer formats out there. For the WMV format, PowerDirector 12 has options up to 4K 4096 by 2160 30p at 20 megabytes per second. Now let's get down with my favorite format for YouTube uploads, MPEG-4. Also known as MP4, this is a container file that stores audio and video. The video is actually H.264, or what you might call MPEG-4 Part 10. Uh, I know it's all confusing and stuff, but I thought I'd hit you off with a little video education. This file type creates crispy, clear HD video at a small file size. It's used for Blu-ray disc, iPads, television broadcasts, online media streaming, and much, much more. Besides the loveness I get from the quality, another reason I use this format for uploading to YouTube is because YouTube compresses videos to MPEG-4 for viewing on their site. All right, now you might be like, so who gives a whatever? Well, I give a whatever. Compressing video from one file format to another decreases the quality. So when I upload an MPEG-4 file, I don't have to worry about it being compressed again by YouTube. When exporting the MPEG-4, PowerDirector 12 Ultimate allows you to select from resolutions all the way up to 4K, 4096 by 2160, 30p at 50 megabytes per second. This file format also uses a lot of processing power and RAM when editing and exporting. So watch yourself now. It's time to talk about MOV. Now, MOV is a file extension that was created by Apple. It's a container that stores video, audio, and text files. MOV files are one of the most flexible file formats out there, and MOV is widely used because of the ability for it to be played on multiple devices, used in multiple editing programs, and the ability to edit MOV files without permanently changing the source footage. PowerDirector can import and export MOV files with the H.264 compression at resolutions up to 1920 by 1080 30p at 15 megabytes per second. This file format is best used for editing, sharing with others to use in their projects, and playback on Apple devices. The universe is now yours with MKV. MKV, which is also known as Matroska Multimedia Container, I know that wasn't easy for me to say, you know, but them Russians be coming up with some words. Now, MKV is a container that can hold an unlimited amount of audio, video, picture, and title tracks. It's an open source format made for universal use. It can be used for movies, broadcast television, and many other platforms. This is the most flexible file format available at this time. Now, a lot of programs or editing programs, such as Cyberlink, 
have MKV as an import and export option due to its flexibility and due to the fact that it can be used without a license. This format can be used for just about any situation as long as the device is compatible with MKV files. It has the highest resolution quality available in PowerDirector 12. Top it out at 4K 4096 by 2160 60p at 50 megabytes per second. Now the render settings differ for each file format. Depending on which file format you select, you can choose from True Velocity for rendering technology. And that gives you the option of either SVRT or hardware video encoder. The other options you can select are Dolby Digital 5.1 Audio and XV Color. SVRT stands for Smart Video Rendering Technology. Intelligent SVRT allows power directors to select the best video profile to export your video. Just press the button above the file formats and it provides you with several formats. You can either select the format that it came up with or you can kick them all to the curb by selecting cancel. Dolby Digital 5.1 Audio delivers 5.1 channels of audio to create more of a cinematic experience. XV Color provides a wider spectrum of range of color than the normal RGB streams that you get out there, and that creates more vibrant colors for your productions. Under the 3D tab, we have all the same options available except AVI and audio. Under the device tab, we have options for writing the file back to a DV tape, a HDV tape, or a hard disk drive camcorder, creating a file for mobile devices, iPhones and iPads, as well as creating files to play back on Sony or Microsoft products. These options allow for some flexibility of file formats as well. Under the online tab, you have options to create files which are directly uploaded to the online streaming site of your choice. Each option has file formats suitable to the site which you're uploading videos to. All right, peeps, that's a wrap. We're done. You know the routine. The thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it, like it, live it, love it, hug it. Give it a hug. If you like the content that I'm bringing to you, show everybody else out there on the web you like it and hit that thumb. Comments. Leave me your comments. I'll always get back with you. And if I can't help you, I'll point you in the right direction to get you the freaking help you deserve. And don't forget to hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus, baby. You gotta hit me up on the online social networks of choice. And last, but definitely not least, don't you ever forget to Subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.